Jesse Wabel. Let's see. Is he in here? Jesse. What's going on, Julian? What's up, brother? Good to see you, man. Happy Monday. Hey, good to see you too, bro. I'm super excited to have you on today. Um, before we like go into all the fights, because I plan on going through fights one through sixteen with you, so we can just uh, you know talk about everything. If you were su su supposed to just surmise Friday night, um, how how would you surmise it? Man, it was awesome. Like I said, brand new venue at Sports and Social. Um, I know a lot of people were excited about it. It sold out a week in advance. I think right under a thousand tickets sold. Um, you know, it was super important for Dave uh, to get the fight at that venue. I know he really, really wanted the card at that venue. I know Jacob Howland helped out a lot um, in making that happen for him. And I'm just glad that Dave finally got to, you know, finally have that event happen. Like I said, I know how important it was to him. So I think everything turned out for the most part, pretty good. I, I, th I thought for the most part, it turned out like really good, man. And I'm, I'm, I was, I was hurt in my heart that David couldn't stay the whole way, man. Your thoughts about that. Yeah, it was a bummer, man. But I, I was I was glad to see him to see him leave. I know he was in a lot of pain. Um, he it was you know shout out to Dave. Uh, the morning of, I uh, he he reached out to me to go down and help. He, Dave doesn't like to reach out for help, but uh, he messaged. It's it's very rare for Dave to reach out to me at like six in the morning. And he reached out to me that day, you know, basically making sure, hey, is everybody still coming to help set up the cage? Are we good? Are we good? I'm like, I think we have enough manpower, dude, but it, I can come down. You know, it's it's a ways for me, but I can come down right now and help out. You know, I went down there and helped out today in the morning, uh, setting up the cage. And Dave was there in an NFC T-shirt and his pajamas. Just, you know, like, Dave, get on out of here, man. We got this. You know, it, it's just. But, uh, yeah, just I feel for Dave that he couldn't be there. Um, poor timing on that surgery. And I guess he's having a little bit of complications. So just uh, everybody, please just, you know. Think about Dave, say a prayer, whatever it is you may do. Just, you know, have him in your thoughts. Not for sure, man. David Oblast really came through, man. And as I um, as I just said in my opening monologue, man, it was a hell of a performance from the team, man, for Dave to feel comfortable leaving at 9 o'clock on, which was arguably one of his biggest nights in business. That says a lot about the team that he's put in place, man. Your thoughts about the way that everybody performed and just that the night went. I mean, even pros and cons. Like, you know, before we get into the actual fight card, pros and cons, like what, what could we have done better? What went really, really well? Um, just off the top of my head, I guess the production, uh, the video, not on Jenna Lee, of course, but I know the the opening video was a little botchy with the audio. Uh, that was a bummer. Um, I know she put, puts a lot into work into those videos, and I actually really enjoy watching her videos, so I'm, I'm sure she was bummed out about that. Um, a couple of the fighters walkout songs got mixed up. Um, you know, viewing from upstairs was a little shaky, but there were a lot of TVs to kind of make up for it. Um, like I said, there's going to be hiccups with every event, but you know, a few quick fixes. And I think the next time out, it'll be a lot better. I agree with you on everything that you said. I, I will say that, um, and I have to take accountability for this too. It, it took us, I feel like it took us about four or five fights to like really get going to yeah. like really like get into like form. And, you know, I know we were working with the sports and social staff, you know, we're working with our staff, we're working with our production team and things weren't necessarily all together. But as time, as time went on, I felt like we really, like we really started clicking as time went on, man. So um, I, I feel like next time we go there, everybody's going to be a little bit more prepared and that we could have um, a, a, a smoother start. But again, that line was in left field, as I was saying, that line was going all the way around. I saw the video that you posted of it. Yeah, it was crazy, man. Like I said, I know there was definitely over a thousand people there, just fans, not including trainers, um, you know, coaches, fighters, you know, all, all in all, I'm sure pro probably around 1500 in the building that night. It was packed. Um, it was hard for me to move from point A to point B, hard for everybody to go to the bathroom, you know what I mean? Just to get around. But, you know, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. That means, you know, we're doing the right thing. Indeed. We are doing the right thing. Uh, my dad just made this comment. He says uh, the ring seems smaller. Was there any disadvantage in that for the fighters? Your thoughts? I didn't hear any complaints. You know, it was the first time we used an 18 foot cage. I think we've talked about it a few times. We had to rent a cage from combat night. Um, I didn't hear one complaint from any fighter. Um, I heard a couple coaches mentioning, dang, that's a small cage, but they weren't mad about it. They were just saying, wow, that's a small cage. This is going to make for a fun night. So um, other than that, not a whole lot. Perfect. Perfect. So let's go ahead and get into it, man. Um, you know, most of the time we, we used to back in the day, we used to do that after the fight, immediately after the fight. We were having some audio issues with that, but now we're here. I think it's a good opportunity for us to go ahead and get into um, 
the fight of the night? Fight of the night. Got to give it to Tony Hope, uh, the new champion, 135 pounds versus Seth Haas. Um, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, Tony Hope, man, that kid's a stud. Uh, you know, despite the controversy that happened this weekend, uh, he's one of the most talented Muay Thai fighters come out of Georgia in a long time. Kind of reminds me of Adrian Weathersby. Just wow. so unorthodox. You never know what he's going to throw. Knees, elbows, this, that. Uh, you know, he brings it every time. And going against Seth Haas, who, you know, you got to watch, you got to mind your P's and Q's going against Seth Haas. Um, it was a great fight between Son uh, between uh, Tony and Seth. And I definitely have to give that fight of the night. Um, submission of the night, got to give it to, you know, the man of the hour, uh, Abraham Perez. The uh, Darce choke out of nowhere. He just, you know, seems to find people's necks, man. Uh, Abraham Perez has, has uh, had two back to back stellar first round submissions. Uh, and, you know, that was a beautiful Darce choke against Chad Risley. Um, another, you know, fantastic submission from Abraham Perez. And knockout of the night, no brainer. Got to give it to Nathan Rivera. Man, five seconds into the round. This is crazy. So he's four and three as an amateur now, four and three, four and two, something like that. And uh, three of his four wins ha have a combined 31 seconds all by knockout, a 16 wow. second knockout, a 10 second knockout and a five second knockout. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, Nathan Rivera, uh, man, props to that guy. Yeah. Hell of a knockout came out right away. Really what I think dropped Cody was the jab. Yeah. It was a it was a jab pause two. Boom. And it, but that jab really is the one that sat him down. It woke you him really up. go you back and watch it. it. In the video, it woke him up a little bit. Yeah. And if you and after the fight, his nose, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't just like a quick you know dinger. His nose was gushing blood. Oh yeah. Uh so man, just shout out to Nathan Rivera. Um the knockout king, uh, like I said, 31 seconds and three fights all yeah. by knockout, putting their opponents to sleep. Oh, yeah. That's crazy, and it's got to feel good. I know Nathan Rivera's feeling, you know, probably on top of the world right now, as he should be. Uh, you know, he reached out to me probably 20 minutes before I came on this podcast talking about, you know, let's go ahead and uh, try and set up a pro debut for June 2nd. And, you know, I'm going to start thinking. So we'll see what we can do. That's exciting. That's super exciting. Um, and before before I comment back on on all your um, <clears throat> on all your picks for fight sub KO, I want to know what uh, what you think about the performance of the night. Performance of the night, got to give it to probably Austin Childers, right? So uh, picked up a first round submission over Kiara West, and in the process gained his brown belt under Coach Gee Curry, who he's been right. training under for years. Um, Austin Childers has been around for a while, man. You know, he's had a lot of fights as an amateur. He's had a lot of crazy knockouts and submissions as an amateur. Um, you know, back and forth so far as a pro, but that's to be expected. You know what I mean? Once you turn pro, the competition level turns up. But uh, Austin Childers, man, is a stud. Congratulations to him on that submission and on his brown belt. Where I'm, I'm not going to disagree with you. I just think that we just have a difference in opinion on a couple of these. Yeah. Um, we'll start with performance of the night. I thought the performance of the night was was Justin Jamar. Yeah, he 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 really impressed me. For somebody coming in from out of state, um, and and I know, look, you gave performance of the night to a professional in um in Austin Childers, and fought a hell of a fight. Got the sub over um Kiara West. Again, I I can't argue with that. When I was just looking at the full scope of things, Justin Jamar, Justin the sniper Jamar, he fought an undefeated Nima, and Nima. I mean, he was mowing through a lot of these guys at 145, right? Nima did move up to 155, but Justin Jamar controlled that fight, was able to defend every takedown, and then finished the fight very, very impressively, right? And I, I thought I thought Justin the Sniper Jamar, that was somebody when I was watching, I was like, wow, like he's, I, I'm very impressed. I know we talked about him last week, but just to actually see it in person and see against, like you, you didn't give him any favors matching him against Nima. No. Yeah, and like I said, this is the first time I've seen him fight MMA in person. I've seen him in a Muay Thai fight up a weight class at 170, so it was kind of hard to judge him. But man, the sniper, Justin Jamar, 8-3 now as an amateur. Um, who knows what's next for this kid? Probably, I'm assuming, maybe going pro next. Um, I don't know too many people that are going to be knocking on the door to fight Justin Jamar next based off that last performance. Uh, but we'll see what happens. But I was really glad to have him out on the card. Like I said, the backstory behind that was cool. Uh, Justin Jamar is a nice kid, reached out to me after the fight saying, hey, man, was 
was that what you were looking for, man? Did I impress? Could, will you have me back? And I said, fuck yeah, dude, I'll have you back, dude. You, yeah, I love sure. having you on the car, man. You were fun. It was exciting. And uh, yeah, there's nothing more I could ask for in that case. Again, so congratulations. I, 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 to I, I think it's important to have people from out of town come in there and, and make a good showing of themselves too. You know, like introduce yeah. themselves to a new crowd. I, 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 I'm I confident to say like after that fight was over, people were like, oh no, nah, like he's somebody to be, he's a name to be reckoned with. Um, right. KO of the night, right? <clears throat> I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to say that Nathan Rivera didn't have the KO of the night. I'm not going to say that he didn't. I got to just give an honorable mention to my man, Miles Delahante. Yes. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he not, and I like, I really like John Lewis. He yeah. That, John to Lewis me, that was an upset. Mann, and Nate Mann had no, no option but to call the fight over because literally John Lewis was laying in Nate Mann's lap. You I'm know? not going to lie. I, I kind of thought that was a little bit of an upset. I know Miles might be mad at me for that. But John Luis has gone three rounds with uh, Reese Watkins, has gone three rounds with Carl Williams, who's now in the UFC, who just fought Saturday and extended his UFC win record to 2-0, and oh, an undefeated yeah. UFC fighter. Um, you know, I kind of – and Miles is coming off a knockout loss. I kind of thought, you know, John Luis probably has the upper hand. But, man, he, hey, Miles, you proved me wrong. Uh, left hook that stumbled him against the cage, and then that other one that just sat him just down. Man, that was brutal. And then, he, you know, he hopped up on the cage, was super pumped, and then – Hold on, let me calm myself down. Like, it was just cool. I like seeing that. That was cool. So for awesome sure. knockout for Miles. For sure. I, I I just had to put that out there. Like, yeah, look, obviously Nathan going out there and hitting this dude with the one, two, and five seconds, that had it, that that had to give it to him. It's incredible. We've seen it's like we've seen Nathan do that before. And so I just felt like it was necessary for me to just mention my man Miles in, in that sense. Um, I agree with you on the fight of the night. I think that that the Tony Hope Seth Haas fight was the fight of the night. And we'll get to that as we run through our whole card. We'll get to everything that that comes with that fight because there was a lot of uh, hoopla going on on the internet yesterday. We'll get to that. Um, but, I mean, what a hell of a fight. Look, yeah. you know, going into the fifth round, I really thought it was 2-2. I thought that Tony Hope took the first two rounds. I thought that Seth took the last half of round three, right? Tony yeah. took the first half of round three. Seth took the last half of round three. I don't know how the judges scored that. You could score that either way. Seth Haas definitely took round four. Agreed, yeah. Round five, it was like, it, to me, it was like, it like round three was so close. Because, like, I think it was round three where Seth hit Tony with, like, a body shot. And everybody was like, Ooh. yeah. It was like yeah. one of those like, ooh, you know what I'm saying? Tony and was, was like, selling it. Like, he was selling it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was one yeah. of those like fight, like perspective altering shots where it was like, well, dang, is Seth Haas winning this winning this round? Especially after Seth Haas was bloodied up in that first round too. So much blood. Well, I think we had probably round. six or seven people in there cleaning the cage, including Charlene and all white and a new blonde hairdo. I had, um, so, I, you know, I got mad at Charlene. I was like, Charlene, don't do that. Don't Get out do of that, there. Charlene. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Don't do that, Charlene. Yeah. Don't do that. You, no, you're looking too nice. Yeah. <laughs> me in there cleaning up that man's blood. But just after the first round, the optics of the first two, the third round for him to fight back in that third round. Because, like, you know, a lot of people could have just folded it in after that. You know, your nose is bloody. You're getting beat up. You're getting hit with teep kicks. We could have just folded it in. But he didn't. He came back and... He made that third round very competitive. He won the fourth round. The fifth round came out there, and it was like, yo, like, Tony Hope ended that fight, and it was one of those, there's no there's no controversy because Tony Hope ended that fight essentially on top, you know, just yeah. in, in a dominant position. So I give that the fight of the night. When it comes to the sub of the night, I got to give an honorable mention to my man Jeremy Medina. Saw that coming. Come on now. I mean, yeah. he, I mean, he had Chris Dean's like, was that a Kimura? Yes, sir. A Kimura. He had him in the Kimura and like, yo, like that was nasty. Yeah. That was nasty. That was nasty. So I just want to throw that out there. Obviously, Abraham Perez, the dark show was beautiful against somebody else who, I mean, who's a submission specialist as well. And uh, yeah. Chad Risley, shout out to Chad. Chad gave me a shirt too. But I did tell both of these guys, I said, look, whoever went, being I got merch for both people, whoever wins. I'm gonna wear their merch on um on, on the pod. So that's a fresh looking person. hat. Yo, El Bambi, they got really good merch. Yeah. Look, he put the NFC on the side too. I don't yeah, know really cool. merch the way uh Perez is pushing merch. So shout out to them for sure. Um, 
yeah, so that that was just my thing. And I and I have to say, honorable mention, <clears throat> best walkout of the night was Abraham Perez. Oh yeah. Dude, I, I, you know, like you said, when you were taking a picture of me and Abraham, he said, you know, uh, Jesse's low key, you know, your biggest fan. And dude, I'm a big fan of Abraham Perez. He's a calm, cool, calculated killer. Um, quiet as can be, um, walks around really close to 125 pounds, a super, a super professional, trains hard, has a big family, a big fan base. Um, and like I said, every time he comes out, he puts on exciting fights, exciting finishes, whether he wins by decision, whether he finishes the fight, it's exciting. And he's five and zero now. And just man, Abraham Perez is the man. Like I said, a huge fan of Abraham Perez. Uh, one cool thing that, that I did like to do, there was a, uh, when he was walking out, there was a little kid trying to get his attention. Abraham, Abraham, Abraham was, you know, he's in his zone. When Abraham walked in the cage, he was like, Abraham, I love you. And I just thought it was so cool. I was like, hey, man, come here, buddy. Come with me. And, you know, I took him with me, let him sit next to Tiffany, like, cage side right there against the cage. He got to see Abraham, you know, pick up the first round submission. And then I said, you know, come on. Come on with me, buddy. Let's go in the cage. Here, you ever put a belt on somebody before? You know, let's do this. So it was cool. I like – hopefully – I don't know who that kid was. If he's watching, maybe. Hopefully I made your night. But, uh, you know, I thought that was cool. And just, you know, just little experiences like that that I like to do. It was fun. Jesse, you didn't make his night like you made you gave him a memory for a lifetime. Yeah. You know, like when you're a kid, there's certain things that you just never forget. Yeah. That was the kid that was on Abraham's shoulders, right? Yeah, yeah. In the post fight picture. That. that was a moment. And like those are those moments that make the NFC special because you're not gonna have that opportunity in a lot of other promotions, man. For so shout out to you for giving that kid that opportunity, that yeah. moment. And yo, shout out to Abraham Perez's people. I look, I came out here and I said, look, Abraham Perez had the best walkout, right? I noticed a lot of people were running down those damn stairs. Yeah. I was, I'm in the cage, like, yo, slow down. This is your moment. Take your slow time. Down. You know, yeah. walk, walk down there. Abraham, that song played. Abraham stood there at the halfway point of them stairs, and like everybody was just looking at him. You know what I'm saying? He just stood there, and everybody was looking at him. And he stood there for a good 30 seconds until like the the beat dropped. And then when the beat dropped, then he walked. And it was like, it was, it was, it was really some WWE. Yeah, there were there was a there was a uh inspector up there going, Come on, Abraham, let's walk. Come on, let's go, let's go. He was like, No, 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 no. I'm gonna wait for my time and I'm gonna walk out when I'm he ready. Squeeze <laughs> every ounce of his moment out. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like I saw a lot of fighters, and I'm just gonna put it out there. Nathan Rivera ran down the stairs. I'm like, Nathan, no, bro. Like, <laughs> yo, take your time, please. But like Abraham Perez, like the walkout, it was really majestic. And it was like, it was a moment, man. It was like, and, and you know, being that he had the, the rapid fan base out there. And then like, you know, he came out to like a Spanish song and he's the champion. It was, it was a moment that like sticks in my mind. So yeah. I just got to give it, I, you know, I, I know I'm trying to like add different um, um, uh, awards to the award ceremony, but I do <laughs> want to put it out there. I thought that was the walkout of the night. Yeah, I agree. hundred percent. Ladies and gentlemen, again, welcome to NFC. Now show number 23. That is Jesse Wable, NFC's lead matchmaker. We are reviewing NFC 153 live at the battery. So let's go ahead and start from fight one. Jankar Arake versus Kenny Harden. Um, Kenny Harden got the uh, unanimous decision victory. Uh, your thoughts? Yeah, Kenny Harden fighting out of Georgia Pro MMA. That was the first time that jim has been on a card. Um, and he picked up a win over Jan Carr. He was a scary-looking guy, one-and-one one out of American Top Team Atlanta. Um, was, I think I believe it was 29-28 across the boards. Yep. Uh, but, yeah, an impressive showing from Kenny Harden. He's already showing interest in fighting again as soon as possible. So, yeah, shout-out to Kenny. That was an impressive performance. Shout-out to Kenny for sure. Um, I got to say, shout-out to Georgia Pro MMA, right? Yeah. You know, we we spoke about them last week on the pod about like, you know, you didn't know too much about them. You just know that they were eager to get be a part of the show. And they came out first fight of the night and they got a victory that it meant a lot to them. You like you. Oh, yeah. You're you cage tell. Side, well, you, you know, when tell. You, you and I could speak from it because like we're cage side and like we're privy to some of these conversations. We you able to like see and feel a lot of different things. That meant a lot oh, to yeah. that team. Him getting that victory. Kenny Harden looked good. Uh, a unanimous decision victory. Over um Jankar Arake. I saw Jankar's previous opponent, um, Drew Finchin sitting K shot because he wanted to see 
uh, oh. you know, Jan Carr. I don't know if he's asking you for a fight. I, I talked to him briefly. He was essentially saying like, hey, he's in school. He wants to get on a card, but you know, balancing school and cutting weight and X, Y, and Z, that's the whole situation. Maybe, you know, I don't know, a Kenny Harden versus a Drew Finchin. I mean, maybe I don't, I, I'm not the matchmaker. I'll leave it to you, brother. Um, <laughs> fight number two, we had uh, Jerion Alexander versus Jonathan Coffey Jr. Jerion won that amateur tie bout um, unanimous decision. Uh, did you have anything you want to add on that one? Yeah, like I said, O and O going against John Coffey, who's had like five or six fights between MMA and kickboxing. Uh, when I offered the fight to them, they said they didn't care. They weren't really worried about it. <laughs> and uh, went out and put on a pretty good performance, like I said, against Jonathan Coffey, who's been around for a while. Pretty technical performance and uh, excited uh, for Jaron and hope to have him back on a card soon. Uh, wasn't Larry Green in his corner? Is he an X3 fighter? So I believe Jonathan Coffey goes – Larry Green kind of – he trains at a couple different gyms, but he also has a home setup where I believe – Jonathan Coffey and a few other local amateur fighters come over and kind of put in work on like Saturdays and Sundays and stuff. But yeah, I believe Larry was in his corner just because they're so close. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> um, shout out to Jerry on uh, for for getting that dub. Fight three, we had Gunner Breed versus Nico Peace. That was an amateur Muay Thai fight. Nico won that um, uh, unanimous decision. What are your thoughts about Nico, man? Nico seems like a, a, a new character in the NFC. Yeah, it's exciting. You know, 2-0 and o now is already, like I said, Samantha's already reaching out to me about getting him his third fight. Um, went against Gunnar Breed. You know, it was a classic uh, Muay Thai versus Taekwondo fight. And, um, you know, most of the time, unless you're real, real, real high level in Taekwondo or karate, the Muay Thai guys, you know, most of the time going to win. Like I said, I'm not hating on karate or hating on Taekwondo. But, you know, styles make matchups. And, uh Nico Peace went out and did what he said he was going to do. He went out and fought hard and got the finish. I believe that was the second round with a TKO finish. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he looked impressive. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate you correcting me on that. I, it wasn't UD. It was a, it was a TKO. Now, yeah. Nico needs how many more fights before he takes off the headgear? One more. One more. Um, he's <clears throat> fighting at 70, correct? Yes, sir. What other guys fall into that 70 range? I'm not even talking about just amateur tie. I'm talking about just like advanced amateur Muay Thai. Do we like what other fighters are we talking about in that in that weight class? So once he turns advanced amateur, you know, we're looking at like I said, there's a lot of guys with the Muay Thai fights for me, particularly a little harder to match up. I don't want to say there's better Muay Thai matchmakers out there. There, there probably are. I'm I'm more into MMA. Um, of course, you know, I know the Muay Thai fighters I know, but they, like, there's just a lot. And with Muay Thai, when you look online for MMA fighters, their record, everything is on there. When you look up Muay Thai guys, you, you can't find anything. I, a guy could come to me and say, Hey, I'm three and three in Muay Thai. I want to fight on your card. And there's really nothing I can really do to go online and prove that this guy's actually three and three. And as far as I know, with the commission, there's really no way they can go online and prove they're three and three. So it's kind of weird, you know what I mean, opposed to MMA. But, uh, but yeah, just an interesting tidbit. That's what I noticed, too, when I was making my note cards for the fights, man. Like, you know, just even with the with the tie fights, excuse me, even with the tie fights, like, they didn't have their weights listed. So, like, does the commission not have any oversight over the tie fights? Mm -hmm. I want to say maybe um, David told my brother to stop putting the weights on the tail of the tapes. I could be wrong. Um, but I think that's what it was. But even like David, David sent me a picture of Matthew Waller's official, you know, situation. And like those tie fights weren't on there. So <laughs> like, I mean, when you're saying that you're not seeing any information on tie fights and I wasn't getting any information, I'm, it is, I don't know. Like that, that's interesting. I, I do think Nico peace is, uh, as, as a new character in the NFC, he's fighting with Ose. Um, uh, he's training with Ose rather in Gwinnett training Academy. They're doing some good things out there. I think Nico is a is a good look for the NFC, and I, I would, I, I'm interested to see if you know. I, I know you said his uh, representation is hitting you up to see if he can get another fight. Interested to see him on another card, and you know if he can continue to grow and build. And I'm, I, I I could see him, you know, doing some doing some big things here in the NFC and bringing out people. I mean, he had a crowd. His mom was out there. His mom was sitting there next to my dad, and super excited about that. So That's cool. shout out to Nico Peace TKO victory. Fight four, Christine Jeremy Medina. Um, I thought the tail of the tape said a lot. Christine, six feet tall, Jeremy Medina, five, five. They yeah, got Christine, they Christine, more of a uh, striker, Jeremy Medina, a grappler, power lifter, a strong guy. And you saw that in the submission where he got a hold of Christine's arm and, and there was nothing Christine was going to do about it. 
Uh, you know, he took that arm home with him. It was either that or his shoulder was going to get dislocated. And uh, excited. So now both of these guys, Christine and Jeremy Medina, can both go advanced amateur now. So I'm excited to see both of them in the advanced amateur ranks at 135 pounds. But, uh, yeah, Jeremy Medina, 2-1 and one now, has only lost to Alex Gordy, who also fought on the card. We'll talk a little bit about later. And uh, but Jeremy Medina, yeah, that kid's a stud, man. Uh, any idea about who you want to match him up with next? Jeremy Medina? Yes, sir. Not off the top of my head. It's hard. It's hard right now. Just you know, we're, I'm just still processing Friday, but we're, we're going to start looking at something. It's 35 is a pretty competitive division in, uh, oh, yeah. in the NFC. 35 is a very competitive division, and now that he has, you know, the the the, the training wheels taken off of him, you know, there's 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 some options available. So I look forward to asking you that question in a couple weeks because he oh, yeah. did have a good showing. Shout out to Warrior BJJ for uh, getting Jeremy Medina all prepared for that fight. Chris Dean's very entertaining on social media. They were very um, uh, respectful after the fight. Hell of a submission lockup. I mean, hell of a submission lockup. The doctor had a doctor, Chris uh, Har- Har- Harazzi, had to come in there and check on Chris D. And I'm sure his arm was hurting after that because he locked that. You said he took his arm with him. <laughs> that was that was good. Yeah. I, was, I caught that. He took his arm with him. I saw that. Uh, fight five, Lance Lee Puma versus Tommy Brown. Man, a back and forth fight between those two flyweights. Uh, Tommy Brown again representing Georgia Pro MMA. I like Tommy Brown. That kid's a—he's uh, young, he's humble. Uh, his mother actually showed up at 8 a.m. to help set up the cage to get a free ticket because uh, tickets sold out and she didn't have a ticket to see her son fight. So I thought that was pretty cool. But um, yeah, Tommy's just a, a young kid, hum, you know, humble. Um, even though he lost, is in good spirits. Is in good spirits. Messaged me saying like, "Hey, man, thank you for the opportunity. That was the best." you know, moment of my life. Uh, it's definitely rewarding for me to hear stuff like that, even though they lose. It's just like, they don't, they're just so excited for the opportunity. And of course their first fight being at the brave stadium, I'm sure he was super pumped, but uh, Lance D La Puma. However, I can't remember exactly how that goes. Yeah. 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 I got you. Yeah. He's out of SPG Athens. Uh, like you never know what you're looking at with, with uh, two O and O guys, but, uh, he was a solid grappler and ended up getting the submission in the third round. And, uh, pumped to see him back at 125 pounds like i said 125 pounds isn't the largest you know we don't have the most fighters in that weight class so the more 125 pounders i can get in there the better indeed so before i get to like you you said something you were like uh you know his mom didn't have a ticket you know she she came earlier uh my dad just popped in and said hey thank you for not letting him wait in that left field line he said he saw you he was able to just slide in right with you shout out to you man for taking care of the fam yeah of course yeah, it was the first time meeting you today. He was a nice guy. Yeah, now that's my man. 500 grand. Um, <laughs> Lance Lee Puma versus Tommy Brown. Tommy Brown, another one of those guys that's from Georgia Pro MMA. I think that that kid, 19 years old, lost nothing in that yeah. game because that was a hell of a scrap. Them boys was in there rolling. They was they, It was in there tussling. That's what I, that's what I say. You know, people that don't know all the, 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 the technical terminology with jujitsu and grappling, they were in there tussling. Okay, that was a, that was a nice three-round tussle. Oh, yeah. um, and Tommy I was telling Brown his coach made- afterwards, I was telling him like, Hey man, my first MMA fight, I got choked unconscious in front of my mom. Uh, didn't wake up for like a minute and a half. They thought I was dead. So hey, it could have been worse. Don't worry about it. I didn't mean to laugh so hard, but that was actually pretty funny. <laughs> <Are you> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> Tommy Brown like really made a good showing of himself. Like he really did like, and he was, I noticed when I was like reading his name off, like, yo, buddy was like in it. Like he was um, taking in all of it. Like he was like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, we here. And I like, I like that energy. Lance Lee Puma, 30 years old, making his debut. I think that says a lot too. him being 30 now. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, oh my God, I'm 30. I'm 30. Oh my God. I'm like Life is about to change. Life's... He stepped into the cage for the first time and he got yeah, a victory. Awesome. And you can tell how much that meant to him too. That was a really good scrap. Um, shout out to Lance and shout out to Tommy. Uh, Tommy was the second of uh, two Georgia Pro MMA guys to compete. Again, I have to say, Georgia Pro MMA, they really came out and they showed out. They really yeah, and they've got a couple guys. There. His coach has already – I reached out to all the coaches yesterday. They've already got a couple guys ready to go for the next one. So, hope to have him back on the card. For sure. And, I, and, like, Tommy Brown, even in defeat, he showed he showed his valor. And, like, I think Georgia Pro MMA should be very proud of the way – that both of their fighters came out and represented themselves in the yeah. NFC for the very first time. So shout yeah, out I'm definitely Tommy a fan. Brown. I'm definitely yeah. a fan of Tommy Brown. Straight, straight up. I'm a fan of Tommy Brown after that too. Cause like you could tell how much that meant to him. Like when I was reading his name, he was like, I'm telling you, he was geeked up. He was yeah. geeked up. And I was like, I like that energy. 
Shout out to Lance Lee Puma for getting that victory. Fight number six. <clears throat> Antonio Walker versus Damon Friend. Uh, advanced amateur MMA. Uh, Damon Friend won by TKO in round number one. Your thoughts? That was a different Damon Friend that I've seen in the past. You know, typically his last couple fights, he comes out a little slower. He lost one fight by standing guillotine, won a fight by standing guillotine. Haven't seen a ton of striking from him, though. Uh, but he came out like a bat out of hell this time. As, you know, he rocked Antonio. And uh, as soon as he, you know, saw Antonio was rocked, he told me as soon as he heard the ref say, Antonio, you got to fight back. He just went crazy, uh, you know, and finished the fight in the first round. That was his first uh, TKO finish. And now he's going to be advanced amateur at 125 pounds. So just like I said, excited to see, it, you know, Damon move up, start fighting tougher competition. And, you know, shout out to Damon. That was, or to Damon, that was an awesome uh, first round TKO finish. Awesome first round TKO finish. And just just to be correct, you was that fight at, you said 125 or 145? 145. Okay, 145. Yeah, um, that was an advanced amateur fight. I'm interested. There the, Again, there are fights to be had at 145. And Damon... To be, to be, I mean, Damon's fought a lot of, a lot of really good people. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually like, looking at putting Damon, maybe breaking news. I'm trying. I'm working on Damon versus Anthony Anderson, three and O out of ATT team Lima, two and one versus three and O June 2nd. That's the fight I'm working on. So hopefully we can make it happen. I think that's the fight. And I, I don't, I, I mean, I don't, I'm not in the discussions with you, but I feel like Damon isn't really turning down anything. Um, no. You know, I feel like Damon's been showing up to a lot of these shows here as of recent and ready to compete again. I think he's a warrior BJJ guy as well. Yes, sir. Shout out, shout out to Damon Friend. Uh, shout out to Antonio Walker for taking that uh, fight on short notice too. Um, and I, I, I thought what you said. I, our conversation last week was great, Jesse, in the sense that, like, you know, you, you, I think you made it clear to everybody that, hey, like, yo, you're human, and you know, when when people make a, a, a impression on you, you want to take care of those people. Yeah. Uh, Antonio Walker made an impression on you. He was the first person that you decided to call for the opportunity. He got the opportunity. He came up short this time. But he still stepped into the cage. Shout out to Antonio Walker, um, all the way out there from. Uh, Speaking of Antonio Walker, Chris Dean, those two are actually uh, messaging each other about possibly fighting. So that could be a fight, Chris Dean versus Antonio Walker that we make in the future. I think, I think, I think that's a great fight. And if if he hasn't already, I I want the I, I'm gonna get behind this. Let's get Antonio Walker uh, 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 a scale business. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Let's like with. If we need to start a GoFundMe campaign to get my man Antonio Walker his own scale so that he doesn't have to go to Walmart to step on the scales, let's do that. I know that was what was discussed on the pod when Antonio was on last time, but I would love to see if anybody has an extra scale that is calibrated correctly. Let's go ahead and get that to my man Antonio Walker because he does come all the way out from Albany, Georgia, and he comes alone. And I, I see people step into his corner that are really yeah. not his corner men to corner him. And so... Win, lose, or draw, we need to really get behind somebody like Antonio Walker because he's coming out there. You know, like, you know, my biggest saying is support a hustler. Support that hustler, man, because he's out here really getting to it. And he'll come alone, as he did today. I mean, as he did on Friday, he came out on the other side of the uh, of the decision, but he still showed up. He made the walk. Respect to Antonio Walker. Ladies and gentlemen, this is NFC Now, show number 24. I'm Julian Virgin. That's Jesse Wable. Uh, we are breaking down NFC 153. We are on fight number seven now. Nathan Rivera versus Cody Ortiz. Now let's let, let's ask. Let me let me ask you this. How did this fight come about? What was your thought process as you were matching this fight? So basically, just trying to you know, there's a lot of 45ers at Team Lima. Um, I promised Nathan after his last fight. I was like, man. With a performance like that, <clears throat> you kind of have first dibs. Uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure to get you back on a card, especially you know the event we were at, the uh, sports and social. I think he lives like maybe seven or eight minutes away from there, so it just makes sense, ticket sales wise and you know promotional wise, hype wise, to get him on a card. I kind of promised him like, look, I'm gonna get you on that card. If you can kind of refrain from booking yourself on other cards, trust me, I got you. And uh, he listened, and we got him on the card. Uh, you know, Cody Ortiz stepped up, you know, it was his first advanced amateur fight in Georgia, but he's had other advanced amateur fights outside of the state, plus Muay Thai fights. And, uh, you know, Cody Ortiz is no slouch. You know, he's good. He's well-rounded. He's got good stand-up. He's, like I said, he has Muay Thai wins. He's got jiu-jitsu victories and jiu-jitsu competitions. He's got MMA victories. But uh, if you go back and watch that fight, man, 
as soon as the fight starts, Cody just kind of stands there flat, like with his hands just kind of still and his feet and everything just kind of still. You can't do that with Nathan Rivera. Like I said, he essentially knocked him out with that jab. If you go back and watch, if he would have not even thrown that other right hand, I think the fight would have been just a four-second knockout with a jab. Um, super impressive. Like I said, Nathan Rivera, three fights, 31 seconds, three knockouts. That's insane. Uh, I've never even heard of that before. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Uh, my guy Chuck Hughes on Facebook says, taking nothing away from Nathan because he's a beast. I just wonder if the smaller cage may have had an effect on Cody. Nathan was on him quick. That one step can make a difference. So I will say to argue that, you know, in the contract, we never really include the cage size in the contract, but we did make a note in the contract and the uh, itinerary emails that we sent out to everybody. Yo, look, this is going to be a little bit smaller of a cage. There were no complaints. Um, I just think Cody Ortiz kind of came out a little stagnant. You know, I think maybe if he had came out, look, if you're fighting Nathan Rivera, maybe let's circle, right? <laughs> maybe let's start, maybe let's circle away from his power, um, run around in circles, shoot some takedowns. Let's not stand right in front of Nathan Rivera in the first 10 seconds of the fight. Right, guys? <laughs> I think that does make sense. Now, I think, I think now the question it begs is, who is up next for Nathan Rivera? I know you've already matched Travell Miller yeah. with um, my man. From Giovanni ATP. Butler. G Giovanni Butler. I saw him in the corner of somebody else. Uh, TJ Holt is now matched up with uh, Idell Gladney. What 45er could we see take on Nathan Rivera? So the first thing Nathan Rivera said to me about eight seconds after his knockout is it's time to get paid. I'm ready to get paid for this. Um, it looks like, you know, he's four and three. He's got a winning record now as an amateur in Georgia. They require you to have at least five fights and a winning record. He's got that winning record now. He's coming off a couple dominant performances. Um, I think Nathan Rivera is looking to go pro next. At least that's what he messaged me. I, of course, I still got to talk to Diego Lima. The final say goes through him. But uh, I told Nathan Rivera, I'm going to start thinking of uh, some pro debut options for him for June 2nd. So uh, we've talked openly on this pod about you being a uh, – you going pro a little too soon. Do you think that Nathan Rivera is ready to go pro? I think he's ready, man. I think, you know, like he's talked about, you know, the fight with Kozer, I think he learned a lot. Kozer had, you know, 16 amateur fights and is now a pro. And I think that fight alone, you know, taught him a lot. Like, man, and the Muay Thai fight he had before that against Carrington Johnson. I think he just really realized, like, look, this is what I got to work on. Um, and, you know, he's fixing the holes he has in his game. And like I said, his last two fights, 15 seconds combined. It's crazy. Um, would I like to see him have another amateur fight? I, I wouldn't be against it. But if he wants to go pro, I wouldn't be against that either. I, you know, I think he deserves it if he was ready to go pro. And is like I said, as long as his coaches, you know, Nathan, if you're watching, ask Brantley, ask Diego, ask Douglas. Ask Trey Sean. Ask your other pro teammates. What do you guys think? Do you, I mean, be real with me. Do you guys think I'm ready to go pro? That's all you got to do, man. And if they all are in agreement, let's make it happen. I'm with it. I'm with it. You know, I, I just I remember I remember those losses of Nathan Rivera. I remember being yeah. there for those losses and like seeing seeing how he bounced back and he's bounced back and like again those 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 wins have been so quick. It's like he. It, it, Really, his last two wins, he hasn't been tested. You don't get to see he a whole lot of He hasn't taken a punch his last two wins. Yeah. You know, like, like I said, I'm curious to see how he's been working his wrestling, his jujitsu. We haven't got to see it. So, yeah, I that, understand that, that, completely. That's my only – Nathan's my boy. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like I'm just interested to see, like, okay, like – and Nathan always says, like, you can't get too high off your wins, but you can't get too low off your losses. Like, is this truly the time to go pro? And it's like there are still fights out there to be had at 45 in the amateur ranks. But again, I don't I don't know what people's pocketbooks is looking like. I don't know who's depending on him to make this bread. And I, I, look, I can't make the decision for him. I just know there are fights. To, like, I would love to see a, a Nathan Rivera, TJ Holt fight, right? Yeah. In the future. I would yeah, love to see a, a Nathan one. Rivera, Travell Miller fight in the future. That's a fight I was trying to make for an amateur series card. Nathan Rivera versus Tra uh, Travell Miller. It's not often I would book like a regular fight, like a non-title fight as a main event. That was one I was trying for, for actually April 21st. Didn't work out, you know, the timing and everything. But uh, but it's all good. You know, like I said, there's like you said, there's tons of fights to be made and we'll make them happen. Yeah, I just, you know, look, 
Nathan, if you are watching, man, I just hope that you talk to your coaches about this, man. Like, you know, because you only you're only able to turn pro runs. What once you're going pro, you can't go back amateur and let you know right. once once you make that first pro walk, there's no back going amateur. And sure. um we saw uh Jared Gooden fight this weekend. And um what what's my man from ATT team Lima? Carl Williams. Carl Williams. We saw Carl Williams fight this weekend. Um Amun was on the pod a couple weeks ago, and he said, "Like, look, when Georgia when when Georgia fighters go and fight in different places, you're representing Georgia MMA, right? Georgia, they don't care what gym you come from. Like, if you fought in the NFC, you're representing us. So when when you go to that next level, we want to make sure that you're as prepared as possible to yeah. represent us as a whole. I don't care if you're ATT Team Lima X3, this place, that place. We want to make sure that you're the best, well suited." to represent everybody. I just hope Nathan's like, if he's going to make that step, let's just be ready. Shout out to Nathan, his entire family. His dad is always there. His girl, shout out to all of them. So um, yeah, great victory. Nathan Rivera, another five second KO. That was crazy. Um, fight number eight, Devonte Davis, Jamarcus Hall. Jamarcus Hall got the uh, split decision victory in an advanced amateur tie fight. Your thoughts. Yeah, great fight. Devontae Davis normally fights at 125 pounds, uh, moved up for this fight to fight. Um, sorry. Uh, he Devontae Jamarcus Davis, Hall. Jamarcus Hall, yeah, yeah, yeah. To move to fight Jamarcus Hall. Uh, it was a good fight. Like I said, three round, it was a three-round fight, not five rounds. They were able to throw elbows, everything. Um, I believe just Jamarcus Hall just was a little bit ahead of uh, Devontae, you know, throughout the whole fight. Uh, Devontae's a tough dude. Like I said, his only fought studs, his only losses to Justin McCollum. Mm -hmm. You know, Jamarcus Hall, he's fought nothing but studs, but I believe Jamarcus Hall was just a tad bit ahead of him the whole fight and picked up the victory. I believe it was 29-28 across the board. Yeah. Shot, shot, no, it was it was a split decision. Some, uh, I think split. one. Um, yeah, you're right. You're I, right. You're right. You're right. I believe one judge scored the contest in favor of Davis, but I think Jamarcus Hall did get it done. And Jamarcus Hall, again, a seasoned veteran, a seasoned amateur veteran. He's had a yeah. lot of fights. Almost fought, almost 20 fights, yeah. And he's fought everybody. So, like, yeah. shout out to him for just continuing to just make that walk over and over again. Um, you mentioned um, Justin McCollum. You mentioned Justin McCollum. Justin McCollum, Josh Kozier, give us an update. That fight's off. Off. Uh, Justin McCollum apparently has a, uh, a hurt ankle – sprain something kind of an ankle uh he's not gonna be able to do it uh josh Kozer is gonna be fighting a todd monroe out of matrix mma in north carolina uh they stepped up so that fight's gonna happen april 21st okay thank you for that update i heard that yep. name and i feel like i heard some news regarding the justin mccullum fight we just didn't hear anything on nfc now yep. show number 23 that's jesse wable i'm julian virgin fight number nine miles dillahante john lewis we hit on it a little bit earlier. I say that was an honorable mention for KO of the Knights. Um, you said John, you thought John Lewis was going to win. Miles Dillahante got that victory. Miles is at 185 pounds. There's not a, there, I, I, in my opinion, well, just from my understanding, I don't know if there's a lot of 85ers just walking around here that you can match him up with. What can we see next for Miles? Yeah. So the higher you get up in weight, like 185, 205, and heavyweight, it, the, um, you know, the amount of people in that division, it kind of it kind of hinders. Um, we're going to look at what we can get for Miles next. Like I said, a lot of 185 pounds, 170. Uh, they're in the same team, you know, Team Lima. Uh, we're going to look at what we can do for Miles, but I definitely think after that performance, you know, he's up there next in rank for a title shot. I believe – I'll have to go back and look, man. We've got so many damn champions nowadays. I believe that that title, 185 pounds uh, in, in uh, MMA, is vacant. And if it is, we're going to look at starting to give Miles a title shot. Yeah, I, I would I would like to see that. Um, I think Miles, um, not as big of a character, but I feel like he has a lot of personality to him. Coming from Oakland, um, you know, he, he yeah, and he he had a good post fight with uh with with um Kimberly. Shout out to Miles. Shout out to John. I know John had a lot of family out there, and it's always disappointing to see when somebody has a large following them get knocked out in front of their family. Yeah. You know, that's I mean, that's that's the nature of the beast that we deal with when we're mm -hmm. in mixed martial arts. There's a lot of different ways to get clipped. And he got clipped pretty good, uh, fell into Nate Mann's lap. Um, shout out to Miles Del Hante. Fight number 10. Somebody's O's got to go. And somebody's O that went was Will Hughes as Alex Gordy got his hand raised. He won via TKO, if I'm not mistaken. 
how did you yeah. surmise that fight? We'll have Alex Gordy on the on the pod a little bit later, so y'all stay tuned to hear what Alex Gordy has to say. But yeah, Alex about? Gordy, man, is a stud. 4-0 now, uh, coming off two impressive finishes. Um, his last fight before this one, I don't know if you saw it. It was for uh, Impact Promotions when we went down to Dothan. But he got a nasty suplex knockout, like picked the guy up from the back and slammed him on his face. He was out cold immediately. And then this time picking up a, a TKO finish in the second round against another undefeated fighter and Will Hughes. Uh, you know, Alex Gordy, 4-0 now, fighting out of Bad Apple MMA, one of the best gyms in Georgia with one of the best coaches in Joseph Creer. Um, to be honest, I think he's ready for a title shot. I don't know what Earl McKinney is up to. But that's definitely the fight that I'm looking to make happen next is Alex Cordy versus Earl McKinney for the NFC Georgia 135-pound championship. Okay, okay. So a couple things. Uh, and I'll start with the last thing that you just said. I feel like last time that we spoke in regards to, like, matchups, you were trying to match Earl McKinney up with somebody else. Who is that somebody else? Mm. Oh, you're asking all the tough questions, Julian. Um, uh, I can't up. think of it off the top of my head. Um, was it if, if Earl McKinney went pro, it was the Jamar Whitehead. We're looking at that, yeah, but I'm not sure whether he's going pro yet or not. I know he just signed, like, a new management deal with, like, Jackson Wink or something something that I've never heard of before, and I've been trying to reach out to his team and get him something because, like, I have fights for him, but uh haven't heard anything from his team yet. It's kind of just crickets. Okay, okay. Now, let's uh, – Alex Gordy, Earl McKinney, and it would be an amazing fight. I yeah. got to say, Alex Gordy is one of my favorite fighters in the NFC right now. Like, I'm excited to watch him fight. I remember watching him fight uh, in Tannery Row. Yeah. And just, like, his style. Like, he's not afraid. He's not afraid. Yeah. And Will Hughes is a stud, too. I don't think Will Hughes' stock dropped any either. Like, no. I mean, they 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 fought each other. It was a good fight. Alex Gordy, you know, came out with the dub. But I w I'm interested to see Will Hughes, because that was a 35 fight, right? Yeah, 135 pounds, yeah. This so now he's a bad amateur now, too. I feel like that that will hughes again will hughes was undefeated stepping into that yeah will hughes is no slouch i don't think his stock dropped at all like and will hughes bought a great crowd out there too if i'm not mistaken will hughes bought a too bad will hughes and jeremy medina trained together that'd be a great fight oh the, 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 you said <laughs> too bad they do yeah oh uh, yeah now that would that would be a good fight i mean but i mean there, again 35 there's a lot of there's a lot of fighters in 35 yeah. so shout out to um will hughes alex gordy was a was a shorter fighter, not the smaller fighter. Everybody weighed in at the same uh, height. But Alex Gordy's just not scared, man. He's a scrapper. He's a scrappy little dude, man. I like Alex Gordy, and like I think everybody should really be on the lookout for him. He's now four and zero. He beat a previously undefeated fighter in Will Hughes, which is now three and one. I'm very interested to see where both of those guys' careers go. And I don't know if you do a lot of rematches at amateurs, but I mean, I wouldn't be mad if we saw that fight again. I, I, I again, I'm not signing anybody up for a rematch because I know rematching somebody is always difficult. Yeah, um, I that was definitely a good test for both of them as an amateur, you know, to like fight that, you know, style of competition and that level of competition. It, it's great for both of them. For sure. That was that that was a that was a really even good fight. even Will Hughes. You know, I reached out to him afterwards. I was like, hey, man, you know, great fight. Um, maybe you could call it an iffy stoppage. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, he was he, Alex Gordy hit him with a couple big bombs from Mount. Will kind of protested. But, you know, Will didn't have a bad attitude about it. He messaged me back and said, you know, like, hey, man, thanks. I appreciate it. At the end of the day, it's on me. I should have done more. I should have, you know, I should have got out of there, you know. And and it was cool. They both, both teams had a lot of respect for each other afterwards on Facebook and the NFC community. Even their parents were commenting back and forth with each other. So it was cool to see that. It was a good fight. Like, yeah, that was quietly, in my opinion, like, if if we didn't give Tony Hope and Seth Haas the fight of the night, yeah, that was on his way to being fight of the night. Yeah, they, they fought. They, that was that was a good scrap. Yeah, going on the fight number eleven, Nima Chingizi versus Justin Jamar. Uh, we we hit up. I, I gave Justin Jamar the performance of the night. I thought Justin Jamar, and and I see Alex Gordy just uh, hopped into the chat. I see you down there. What up, Alex? Is that a black eye that I see too, bro? You good? He got Nima stitched on his eyeball. Yeah, I'm nah, not mistaken. Uh, Alex Gordy's a gangster. Um, I, I, I thought Justin Jamar had the performance of the night. Just, And I would say he had the performance tonight because of the way that he finished the fight. I believe at the end of the fight, he threw like a, a spinning kick. Yeah. And I was like, it was it like, it was like, 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 like the, if you don't know, now, you know, judges. Yeah. Give you know it to me. Saying? Yeah. It was like, it was like, like they, they rang the, uh, the, the 10 second like clock. 
and then he threw like like he finished the fight. He wasn't just like, oh, I know I'm winning the fight, so I'm a backup. Like yeah. no, like he finished the fight. And I was standing next to you when I was when we were watching that. I was like, wow, I was yeah. impressed with Justin Jamar, especially with the amount of amateur fights that he has too. Yeah. Like that was another thing that like when you look at somebody's record, how many amateur fights he had, and then now coming to Atlanta at the battery for your first time, and now you're fighting an undefeated fighter, a NFC champion, and Nima Changizi. And he, he looked, he, he looked pretty Ward. flawless. Nima wore it. Nima wore yeah. it on his face, too. Nima's a tough dude, man. Like I said, he, you know, he, like, his stock didn't really drop. Like I said, moving up a weight class. He only moved up a weight class because, to be honest, I couldn't really find anybody for him to fight. So he was just basically saying, look, dude, I'll move up and fight if you can find me somebody. And I found him somebody. And, you know, like the man he is, he stepped up. And he him versus not, Justin, yeah. man, those two were throwing hard kicks, hard punches. Uh, bleeding all over the place, probably the second bloodiest fight besides Tony and Seth. So just, yeah, shout out to the sniper, Justin Jamar. It was a pleasure having you out on the card. And Nima, keep your head up, man. You'll be back. No big deal. Uh, again, just being cage shot and being in the cage when things is happening, man. Brantley Fur came up to Nima afterwards was like, man, I'm, I'm so proud of you, and I love you, bro. Brantley's like, the man. Nima, there's, Nima shouldn't be disappointed by anything. Justin Jamar was the better fighter that night. And he was a heavier fighter. I, I, you know, obviously, Nima won up a weight class. But, man, Justin Jamar is a good fighter. And um, uh, I'm interested to see what he does next and how you match him up. I would love to see him in the NFC again. I know as we were talking, you said that out-of-towners really can't fight for NFC belts. Justin Jamar is going to be on a little bit later. I would love to see him fight for an NFC belt. I guess I just don't know enough about why out-of-towners don't fight for NFC belts. Would you please explain that to the NFC community? So basically David's thought process behind this is we like to keep it Georgia versus Georgia because, A, if it's a, if it's a gym in Georgia, you know, we're, tip, we're pretty cool with every, you know, gym in Georgia. Um, typically we can rely if the, uh, if the person wins the belt, they'll defend it for us. You know what I mean? So say we have somebody from Alabama, like Justin, or from North Carolina, or from Virginia, or from wherever. We can't really force them to come back and defend a belt. You know what I mean? If they have something in their hometown, say we book an, an, a North Carolina fighter. They come here, win the belt. Then I hit them up. Hey, man, what's going on? Um, I've got this guy ready for you to defend the belt against. Can you do Ah, uh, well. Let me get back to you, man. I've got something in my hometown cooking uh, a little closer to home. I can sell some tickets, you know, things like that. So that's typically why we haven't booked like out of state guys versus Georgia guys for belts, just because we can't really, we can't really rely on the out of state guy to fulfill their promise and actually defend the belt. And it just kind of creates chaos. People are wanting to fight for the belt. I don't really know what to tell them. So it just, it, it's worked over the years, just doing Georgia versus Georgia. I got it. And I, I can't argue that point. Now, just from my perspective, and we'll have Justin Jamar on in a couple of minutes after our guy, Alex Gordy. It seems like Justin really appreciated the opportunity. Yeah. And as you spoke on last week, Justin really asked for the opportunity. And it looks like he's very interested in getting another opportunity to fight in uh, in Georgia. And let's just talk about it from the NFC's perspective, right? Justin Jamar comes out to a card where we're fighting at the battery for the very first time. I'm sure, I don't know, I can't speak on other Alabama shows, but I can imagine, I cannot imagine a, a bigger show than what he just fought at right there. Yeah. I, I can't imagine it. Maybe prove me wrong, Alabama. I just can't imagine him fighting at a bigger show than the yeah. NFC. I feel like Justin Jamar would be willing to put it up and defend. Because re realistically, I don't see a lot of, I don't see a lot of other 55ers. That I happened. agree. I guess it could go on a case by case basis. Uh, maybe it's something we could um, put in the contract, like, "Hey, you have to defend if uh, for us within a certain amount of time." Or, you know, if we see you book another fight for another promotion, we're gonna move on. You know, put a stop to it. Yeah, I don't know. I guess that's something we'd have to talk to David and the, and the uh, commission about. Don't 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 let me be the you know be <laughs> be the kerosene yeah. on the fire. But I'm just saying, like, just from that's a great idea. Than what I saw, Justin yeah. Jamar. I mean, for what he did to Nima, which is an undefeated champion in the NFC, I don't see a contender fighting that guy. With yeah. the, he's nine and three now. Let me check my notes. Yeah, he's nine and three. He's nine and three now. I don't. Those see people are going to go. Why is this guy still amateur? The, look. <laughs> yeah. 
by the time he turns pro, he's going to be ready. Like, there's no yeah. questions about him turning pro. Because, like, what I saw for the very first time with my eyes is that that dude is good. Shout out to Justin Jamar. He's going to be on the NFC Now pod. Right now, we got our guy Jesse Wabel on to fight number 12, Tony Hope versus Seth Haas. We've already discussed how great of a fight that was. We discussed that was the fight of the night. We discussed the first two rounds. We discussed the last two rounds. We discussed um, the middle round. Let's get into the controversy at hand. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, so <laughs> according to my sources, right? I have very reliable sources. According to my sources, <laughs> Tony Hope showed up to Wayans a little bit overweight. I was at Wayans too. He showed up after I left, right, with my daughter. Showed up to Wayans after the uh, official Wayans went down. He showed up overweight, over the 135 plus two limit. He ran around the block. He got a uh, gym membership at a local boxing gym that was in that battery area. Try to cut the weight. Still came in 0. .6 over. According to my sources, Tony Hope said, hey, if this fight is not for the belt, I am not fighting. Tony Hope and Seth Haas shook on it and said, hey, if Tony Hope wins this fight, we will do an immediate rematch. It was agreed upon, and that fight was still for the belt. Tony Hope obviously went out there and won the fight fair and square. He was put the, the belt was put on him. Jesse Wabel, from your perspective, what happened and what were your thoughts about the agreement in which was made? So... Before we get into this, this is not a uh, shit on Tony Hope, you know, podcast or anything I'm talking about. Um, I, lo I love Tony Hope. Tony Hope comes out of a great gym. He has great coaches. Like I said, he's one of the most talented fighters and amateur Muay Thai that I've seen in the past couple of years. And I'm comparing him to Adrian Weathersby, which is high regard. So before I say what I'm about to say, nothing, you know, I like Tony Hope a lot. I would like to see Tony Hope kind of uh, work on his professionalism. The first thing I didn't like when it came to this fight with Tony Hope and Seth Haas, we, um, like I said at the beginning of the show, the videos that we do are a big part of the NFC. I love Jenna Lee's videos. Um, it helps our promotion grow. She does a great job. And we can only put so many fights, you know, we can only promote so many fights. So David will reach out to me and say, you know, Jesse, what two fights or what fight do you think we should promote on this card? What fight should we, you know, make a video for? Um, obviously, we were going to do one on the main event, Mike Wilson and uh, Devontae Sewell. Of course, that's a no-brainer. And then, you know, we want to look at who else. Well, Larry Green's fighting an out-of-towner. Austin Childers versus Kiera. Yeah, maybe, but both are coming off of a loss. Um, I thought a good one would be Abraham Perez versus Chad Risley. Both brought out probably the most tickets in, on the whole card. Nathan Rivera versus Cody Ortiz would have been another good one. But I've seen skill in Tony that I can kind of tell, like, this kid's got a bright future. And, uh, and Seth Haas, we haven't done any promotion on him. So I thought, you know what, let's go with that fight. Uh, fast forward to the day of the promo. Everybody's there. Everybody does their promo. Tony kind of no call, no shows, doesn't show up. And I was bummed. I didn't find out until the week after, you know, Seth's video drops. David kind of holds things from me sometimes. Um, Seth's video drops and I messaged Dave like, hey, where's where's Tony? Uh, Tony didn't show up. It's like, ah, oh, man, like that's a bummer, man. We could have we could have spent, you know, we could have had a whole nother fight, get all that promotion. And Tony just no showed. And I didn't think that was very cool. Um, I don't, you know, maybe he's got a legitimate excuse. I'll wait until he gets on the podcast later. But that was my first, you know, kind of strike that I didn't really like. Stop there. Yeah. That was your first strike. Yeah. I was there. Jenna Lee and I were there at the battery when he no called, no showed. It doesn't sit well with, with everybody because it's not even just like Jenna Lee's time, right? Because that's it's everybody's that, time. It, it, it's everybody's time. And it's wasting other people's time that could have had the opportunity to get that exposure. And like that exposure is important. Like, Very important. NFC, like again, you and Dave had a conversation in regards to who do you want to promote? 
Yeah. And one half of those people did not show up in Tony Hope. That was disappointing on my behalf. I'm a I'm a fan as you. I'm a fan of Tony Hope. I think he's an amazing yeah. fan. Yeah. And he goes to the school that I went to and he studies the same thing that I studied. I have to agree with you. The no call, no show left a bad taste in everybody's mouth. And like I said, when he was on the podcast uh, with you guys last month, he seemed cool, seemed knowledgeable, Absolutely. seemed like a nice kid. Um, but, you know, then fast forward to the weigh-ins. You know, um, we've had it. It's always been this way. If you're fighting for a title and you – even if you're fighting for a title, you still get the plus two. If you're fighting for the 145-pound title, you still get that plus two. So you can still weigh 147. It's not that big of a difference. You know what I mean? Um, you don't have to cut that extra two pounds. There's really no excuse to not make weight. Um, you know, he came in overweight, did his thing, went across the street to a sauna, tried to make weight, came back, still didn't make weight. We've had this happen in the past. Travell Miller, missed weight, tried, failed. Jonathan Francois, missed weight, tried, failed. Doug Usher versus Jared Gooden. Missed weight. There was no point in even trying. <laughs> Failed. You know what I mean? And none of them said, look, if I don't fight for the title, I'm not fighting. And that's what Tony did. And, you know, I feel some type of way about that. That's not cool. That's not cool. You know what I mean? We're already trying to put all this promotion on you. Um, and like I said, this isn't a shit on Tony Hope podcast i love tony ho tony tony you the man you 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 whoop me up you know but dude let's work on our professionalism a little bit that's all i'm saying a thousand percent uh, look, I, and and i i agree with you i'm hearing some claps in the background right now i think we agree with you man and like uh, we got to work on our professionalism he is an amateur yeah T to be fair he is an amateur and I was it, super unprofessional when i was an amateur so i right. get it but that's so why this, i'm kind of spitting advice here like dude let's get it together Let's get it together. <laughs> and not only just Tony Hope, this is to everybody in the NFC community who's listening right now. Like, this is Dave Oblas is running the business. Jesse Wabel is a part of this business. Charlene Dixon is a part of this business. Jenna Lee Childress is a part of this business. I'm a part of it. And, like, we're all working to give the people what they want. David Oblas wanted to make sure that this fight took place. And we got on this pod in the beginning. We gave our fight of the night honors to this fight. This fight delivered. It delivered. David wanted to make sure this fight stayed on the card. I could understand what Carissa Tim said. Carissa Tim's usher said on Facebook. I'm sure y'all have seen. If you haven't seen this on the Facebook community, you've seen what was said, the conversation that was had. It was an amazing dialogue. I feel like Carissa Usher's Tim's Tim's Usher was spot on about a precedent that was set. Yeah. With this, and I could understand how Jesse, you are and you are trying to uh, maintain the integrity of these belts. Um, I could also understand where David Oblas was coming from to make sure that we were able to get this fight, and at the end of the day, the people won because we got we were. We were given a 10-minute war by two warriors. Yeah. It's unfortunate that one of those warriors was willing to walk away even though he was in the wrong. Yeah, and I'm curious, like, if, you know, if Seth had said, dude, I'm not fighting unless you're not getting a title if you win. If he would have really stepped away, that would have definitely been a huge topic and a huge conversation to be had like this guy literally didn't show up for a promo video missed weight said he wasn't gonna fight i mean but man no like i said i'm glad the fight happened I'm, I'm i'm curious to see tony on the podcast later to hear what he has to say and i'm just gonna kind of leave it at that tony hope will be on the podcast uh, a little bit later um in the show i know we're uh we're we're, we're we're an hour and 15 minutes in, but you know what, Jesse, like we had, like, there's a lot to talk about on this show, man. So I appreciate your time. We're still going through it again. We just got through uh, talking about our Tony Hope, Seth Haas fight. Somebody just said Seth will be coming back with the mission though, because of all of this. Listen, talking about this fight, Seth Haas's uh, stock did not drop a little bit in my opinion, right? Seth Haas 
is as tough as nails. And I've come on record, and I've told you, Jesse, and I've told everybody, Seth Haas is one of my favorite fighters in this promotion. So, this Julian, team, make sure when you have Tony on the podcast later, the next challenger is uh, it's going to be Cameron Burton. So we're going to try and make that happen. After the rematch? Because, I mean, Seth Haas was saying, I mean, Tony Hope in the post fight was like, I'm giving him a rematch. I'm going to be honest. I don't really, I don't think the rematch makes sense. Um, unless both teams are just 100%, we want it. I want Cameron Burton versus Tony Hope. I, I'm not, I'm not opposed to that fight. There was a gentleman's agreement that was shook on. I would love to hear what Tony Hope has to say. Again, Tony Hope will be on NFC now a little bit later to explain his side of the story. I know there was a gentleman's agreement that was shook on. If Tony won, there will be a rematch. Um, I would love to see that fight too. Cause I mean, Cameron Burton is needs to be recognized as somebody in that 135 pound Muay Thai division. Yeah. I love Cameron Burton as well. Um, Seth Haas though, Seth Haas could have folded after those first two rounds because he was getting beat up and I, I it doesn't give me pride to say anybody was getting beat up. This dude was fighting his ass off, but he was getting the short end of the stick. Seth Haas came back again in that third round. He fought his ass off that fourth round. He won the fourth round, that fifth round bloodied up and everything he still came out there he came out on the short end of the stick but the thing that stood out to me most about seth haas man was when mike wilson made his walk for the main event you know who was holding mike wilson's banner yeah seth haas seth haas that's the man the right there shorts that he fought in and seth haas was wiping his nose with his sleeve <laughs> and there was blood yeah. on that man's sleeve but yeah. he was still out there in mike wilson's corner like a g loyalty <laughs> Like like loyalty, pride, honor, valor. Seth Haas. And that's a true black belt. belt. You know, a black belt in karate, taekwondo, whichever one he is. You know, he, he's all about the loyalty, the respect, uh, like, the professionalism, making weight, hat, you know. Seth Haas. Because a lot of other fighters would have would have been like, nah, I ain't fighting you, bro. You got to cut that weight. Nah, you you over here, you know, you doing X, Y, and Z. I ain't doing that. Seth Haas is a fighter's fighter. And I wasn't there. I left before that whole situation went down. But I'm sure in Seth Haas's head, Seth Haas was like, no, nah, somebody's going to catch these 40 cows. You know what I'm saying? Somebody's going to catch these. And so, like, I feel like the entire NFC community needs to, like, honor Seth Haas for him just being a a, 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 a raw dog, a, a badass. Like, he's a badass. Like, yeah. Seth Haas is that dude. So, shout out to Seth Haas. We look forward to hearing from Tony Hope to hear his side of the story um, about what happened. <clears throat> Moving forward. Fight number 13, Chad Risley, Abraham Perez. We already talked about how Abraham, in my opinion, had the best walkout. Chad Risley had a hell of a crowd, too, man. Chad Risley had the whole hood out there as well. This was hood versus hood. And when I say hood, it's not a, not, not a negative connotation. Like this neighborhood versus this neighborhood. And they both came out, and it was all live at the battery. It was a great energy for that fight. They came out there. They got the scrap in. Uh, Abraham Perez gets the it was a it was an ill dart choke. Is I mean that that was a yeah. dart. Look, Darts Queen would be happy to see that. You know, what <laughs> I mean? <laughs> that was an ill dart choke in a title fight to defend his flyweight title, his second time beating an ATT Lima Team Lima guy. I'm interested to hear what the conversation was at ATT Team Lima, but I'm also interested yeah. to hear what you have to say about that fight, Jesse. Yeah, with Chris Wen in his corner too. Um, that was pretty brutal. <laughs> Um, but yeah, man, just like out of nowhere, you know, both were exchanging head kicks. Um, Chad went for a takedown. Abraham reversed it, got on top. Abraham was kind of on top and guard for a while. Chad threw up, you know, looking to get another one of those arm bar of the year, uh, submission of the years. Oh, An arm oh, bar oh. on uh, Abraham Perez was pretty close, kind of. But uh, Abraham Perez uh, pretty quickly passed to half mount. And then in a scramble, just locked in the arm and the head, got that dark stroke, walked his feet around. And uh, got the submission right there in the first round. Beautiful from Abraham Perez, man. Just flawless right now as an amateur. Like I said, one of my favorites is an amateur. I try not to be biased, but, you know, it is what it is. I come across my favorites and, and Abraham Perez. And I've never talked to Abraham Perez outside of, like, weigh-ins, fights. He doesn't even really talk. He's quiet. I just like his style. I like the way he fights. Um, just everything about him, his fan base. Uh, his manager, Brian Perez, is like one of the coolest, nicest guys I've ever met. We talked a lot. And uh, just shout out to Perez and the whole family. And, yeah, I can't wait to have him back. I'm interested to see how you match him up now. Like, I mean, 125 doesn't seem to have as many in MMA. Am I, am I, am I wrong about that? 
Yeah, it's close, man. So, like, I'm thinking about, I've been thinking about that today. You know, Chris Wen had a fight of the year candidate against Justin Lopez. Um, Justin Lopez also, you know, even though he lost to Chris Wen, put up a fight of the year, uh, you know, against Chris Wen, has a first round armbar victory over Chad Risley, who just fought Abraham Perez. So maybe we look at Justin Lopez versus Abraham next. Maybe we'll see. Um, but we're, you know, we're going to be looking at our options. And also, I don't know what Abraham wants to do ne next. Um, whether he's wanting to stay as an amateur, go pro. I have no idea. I haven't talked to him just yet. But uh, we'll be talking to him next week for sure. Abraham is an amazing character in the NFC. I, he's an amazing character, and like it's it's just it's from his merch, it's from his crowd, it's from his fighting style. Man, like he comes, he gets the. I mean, like. Even when we were in Augusta that one time, I remember it like I looked up in the stand. I interviewed him after his yeah. in Augusta, and his fans right. were like in the nosebleeds, but they yeah. were like thirty deep going. Bumping. Damn, and like you got to respect it. Shout out to Abraham Perez, um, amazing victory. Shout out to Chad Risley as well. I spoke with him afterwards. All good in defeat. He had the whole team come out there for him too. I look forward to seeing him compete again. Uh, uh, hopefully some more 125ers come up um, in, in, in the NFC because that is a very interesting division uh, once we do have some bodies. Our last three fights, now we're going on the uh, professional, uh, uh, our professional ranks, are Jawaski Bestley versus uh, Larry Green. Larry Green won versus uh, via first round TKO. Uh, one minute, 25 seconds in. That was a one-sided victory. If, 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 is, is oh, it was fair? a one-sided victory which I kind of thought maybe it might be, um, you know, Jawaski did ask for the fight, which was surprising, but he brought it, you know, the first like 30, 45 seconds, Jawaski was throwing down. Like I went back and watched, I, you know, I rewatched it today because I was like, man, maybe, I, maybe my mind's not serving me correctly, but he was throwing bombs, throwing kicks, had Larry, you know, throwing four five, six, seven shots in a row. And he was still standing. I think a lot of people thought that Larry was just going to go out and knock him out probably with one punch. And uh, it didn't happen. Jawaski brought it to him. Uh, you know, eventually over the course of the fight, of course, Larry, you know, started getting obtaining the knockdowns and got three the uh, the three knockdown rule. Which yeah. if you get knocked down three three times in a fight, it, that's a wrap. Yeah. Uh, but man, but shout out to Jawaski, you know, hell of a hell of an effort, you know, against a tough Larry Green. Yeah, he uh, he definitely came out, showed up. Uh, shout out to Larry Green. He accepted the uh, he accepted the call out gracefully, and he came out there and handled his business. Now I know on the pod we've had a guy, Michael Jajin. Uh, Gajan Jr. has been calling for the winner of that fight. I don't know. You know, again, I'm not the matchmaker, Jesse. You are the matchmaker, brother. But, I mean, I've seen Michael so many times in this comment section asking for the winner of that fight. He's always talking about heavyweights, heavyweights, heavyweights. Maybe that Michael uh, Gajan Jr. versus Larry Green is maybe the next fight if they're both up there. I'm just throwing it out there, brother. I'll let you do your job. Yeah, yeah definitely could be a possibility. Indeed. Now, um, Austin Childers versus Kiara West. Austin Childers got his uh, brown belt after his submission victory. Uh, did you have anything you wanted to add on that fight? Yeah, just, uh, you know, shout out to Austin. I've seen that guy fight a lot uh, from an amateur to pro. I've known him for a long time. Uh, we actually sparred once maybe like five years ago, and he was funny. Like, he actually made me laugh while we were sparring. He's a funny dude. Yeah. But uh, a cool guy. And uh, like I said, you were kind of – I don't want to say saying anything, but you know, I like to film. I like to get my phone and film just, yeah, just whatever from whatever yeah. angle. I don't care yeah. if it's a good angle, bad angle. You never know if something crazy is going to happen. And um, thank God I was filming that because after he submitted Kiera, I got on the cage to, you know, kind of continue filming, get his reaction. I always just like to kind of send these guys, like, I know there's a pay per view version, but here's just like an extra version from my yeah. phone, from the crowd. It's just something I've always done. Um, if you go back and look at my YouTube channels for like the last 10 years, I've got probably three, four, 500 videos of just random fights that don't even have titles that I'll just, you know, send to these guys. And uh, thank goodness I was filming because I caught him. Uh, I caught Gee Curry actually giving Austin Childers his brown belt, which like awesome. I'm moment. glad I'm glad that I was able to catch that moment on on film because I know how long he's been training under Gee. I know how uh, respected Gee is as a coach. And he actually gave Austin the brown belt that he had when oh, he wow. was a brown belt. I don't know if you noticed, but the, the belt already was worn out, had four stripes on it. And uh, he gave Austin the brown belt, which I thought was really cool. So, yeah, I was glad. And uh, just, you know, shout out to Austin Childers. 
he's been around a long time, and I'm glad to see him get back in the win column after that loss to Jamal Johnson. Take your time, Julian. You're good. Jesse, can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you. I got to say, Jesse, you're a fighter, so you do know, understand the importance of uh, those videos. Oh, yeah. To your, to your fighting career. So shout out to you. I went back and I watched the Nathan Rivera video that you posted on, um, on YouTube the other day because I am subscribed oh, cool. to you. If you, ha if you haven't already, y'all make sure you go ahead and subscribe to my man Jesse Wayle on YouTube. All the videos will be there. Um, our final fight of the evening was <clears throat> our main event, Devontae Stool versus Mike Wilson. That fight went all three rounds. It went all three rounds, went to your winner by unanimous decision, Devontae Sewell, the grinder. Sewell, your thoughts about that fight? Yeah, Devontae Sewell picking up the win. He's the new NFC interim featherweight champion. And what's cool about that is that now sets up a future fight between him and the NFC featherweight champion, Corey Jackson, which is going to be a rematch of one of the most badass fights at 145 pounds I've ever seen in the NFC between him and Devontae. Um, that's going to be a barn burner. Hopefully we can make that fight happen later this summer or, you know, September, October-ish. But, uh, you know, shout out to Devontae Sewell. You know, Devontae and Mike have trained together a lot in the past. They both knew their tendencies. Um, I did, you know, I did go in the cage in between rounds and kind of hear Devontae say, like, look, I think I've got Mike pinned up against the fence here. I think that's my key to victory. And uh, that's what he did, the, you know, pretty much the whole fight. Uh, Mike went for, you know, I think he got one judo throw where he got Devontae down. But other than that, Devontae pretty much, you know, dominated the fight in the clinch. And uh, maybe not the most spectacular fight, but uh, a big win over Mike Wilson, who, like I said, is dangerous. He's dangerous on the feet. He's awkward on the feet. He's awkward on the ground. He puts people in buggy chokes, reverse triangles, reverse arm bars, you know, all kinds of different variations of chokes. Um, that's not somebody that you just want to take lightly. And I don't think Devontae did. And he, he had a right game plan and he looked good against Mike Wilson. And like I said, congratulations, Devontae Sewell out of ground and pound. He's the new uh, interim 45 pound champion. And uh, Corey Jackson, Devontae Subel, let's get to talking. Let's get to making this fight happen for later this year. I'm really looking forward to that fight. I know that's a fight that has already happened, and it was, a, it, was a, it was a close call, so I feel like it's only right for that fight to happen a second time. Shout out to Mike Wilson. Mike Wilson, I thought he did a great job of just taking in the moment. I remember when he walked in, and he did have a post earlier saying that, you know, he walked into the wrong song, but he did take in all the moment. And, Mike, again, Mike Wilson, like, he gets the crowd involved too, man. So just big shout out to our main event of the evening. Um, and shout out to all the fighters. I know we just went through all 16 fights. And thank you, Jesse, for coming on to talk with me about all 16 of those fighters. Because, look, yeah. you know it's important. You you competed before. You know, it's important for, to, to get that acknowledgement and for us to go through literally every fight and give people their time so that we could just talk about them and give them that love. Before we do part ways, I have to ask, I have to give a follow-up, um, get a follow-up from you about Lewis Brewington. I know he suffered a concussion last week, which uh, which caused that fight between him and Reese Watkins to be called off for the 21st. Um, do we have any further updates? I didn't even know Luis was at the fights the other day until after the main event. I just walked outside. Whoa, what's up, Luis? I seen him. He was there. I didn't see and uh, he told me, yo, Jesse, yo, Jesse, what's popping? What's cracking? What's shaking? Uh, let's make <laughs> it happen. for. Uh, let's, make, let's make it happen for June 2nd versus uh, Reese Watkins. And I was just like, okay, man. I'll, I'll try my best. You know, we'll have to get a doctor's note, you know, some updates, what's going on there. Uh, Reese obviously has a fight coming up in April uh, for a different promotion. So we'll have to see if he's healthy after that. I know that fight's at 170 pounds, I believe. And uh, Reese is wanting to fight, or I'm sorry, Luis is wanting to fight at 185. So like I said, just a lot of, a lot of variables going around here. But uh, hopefully we can make that fight happen. I would hate to see the videos that uh, we did, the promotion that we did on that uh, fight go to waste. So, you know, crossing my fingers. I would hate to see it go to waste too, man, because it was really good stuff. And, you know, yeah. uh, you know, uh, but we, we just we had to get an update about what what was going on. Um, finally, shout out to all the, the celebs who pulled up. We had Brian Jordan in the building. We had Emmanuel Lewis, a.k.a. Webster. Um, a lot of really great people just show up and just shout out to the entire team of uh, NFC, the, the entire NFC team who came out there and just delivered 
uh, and, and put together those fights. Shout out to all the fighters who came out there and, and fought their asses off. Um, it was an amazing card. Again, we just went through all 16 of those fights. Uh, before we do part ways, our fight of the night was Seth Haas versus Sony Hope. Our performance of the night, you gave it to Austin Childers. Yes, sir. I said Justin Jamar. Our sub of the night was. I gave it to Abraham Perez. You may have gave it to Jeremy Medina. I didn't give it. To, I, I didn't give it. I, I I said Jeremy Medina is an honorable mention. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you on Abraham Perez being that that was a title fight. And our KO of the night, you gave it to Nathan Rivera. Nathan without Rivera. a doubt. I'm not okay. I I I, I that's a no doubter. I just got to throw my man Miles Delahante in there <laughs> for honorable mention. Jesse Way, well, yo, thank you for joining me for this hour, man. Shout out to you, yeah. Tiff, the whole fam. Um, thank you for your time. Again, I feel like it's so important that we get on here and we like give the card its proper due for us to go through and review it. I feel like we reviewed it. We got your uh, your take on uh, on the the uh, the NFC Bantamweight title fiasco, and uh, we got your take just on everything, man. So thank you, bro. Yeah, of course. And again, just uh, anybody over the next couple of days, if you have any questions, reach out to Charlene Dixon, myself. David's going to be kind of uh, MIA the next couple of days. Um, but again, shout out to Charlene Dixon. She uh, kicked ass on Friday night, uh, stepped up big time, and uh, got a lot of respect for her. Love you, Charlene. And uh, thank you, Julian, for the time. Uh, Janelli, for the videos. Appreciate it. For sure. Thank you so much. And I will co-sign that. Shout out to Charlene. Uh, Jesse Wable, ladies and gentlemen, that is him. Peace. Voila, good people. Happy Monday. Welcome to NFC Now Show number 23. I am Julian Virgin.